What's up? This is Andy, the at-home welder, and welcome to episode 11 of the Welding Tips show. This is the second show where I'm doing this live. Still probably going to be pretty rusty because, you know, I'm a welder, not a TV guy. But I'm doing this live, so it's kind of cool. So today we're going to go over welding or uh, spot welding basics. And I'm not going to go into the great specifics and the ins and outs of the detail work of spot welding. I really want to cover... Uh, just the basics to let you know whether or not when you're going to be able to use them when when are you going to need them as an at-home welder um so we'll just go ahead and dive into this now basically anytime you're going to be doing a lot of sheet metal work you're going to be needing a spot welder uh, it's very very quick it's very precise and it's it's basically the the only thing you really want to use unless you're going to be welding uh, long strips like with a mig welder or a tig welder uh, but if you just need to join things and you don't want to use like a rivet or a bolt or anything like that, spot welding is really the way to go. Uh, the great thing about spot welding is that you need no experience at all to get started. You don't need any kind of gas. You don't need any kind of filler materials. Basically, all you need is a power source and you're ready to go. Um, and the reason you don't need any kind of experience is is all you're doing is just pinching two pieces of metal together with uh, some electrodes and the power is going to flow through there and that is what's going to join the metal. So there's really no uh, learning how to guide your hand or, or learning how to use a, a filler rod at the same time with a tungsten. You don't have to know any of that. You just have to be able to clamp something together and put some power through it. Now, uh, it's very very simple process like I just went over it's it's pinching and adding power the the units themselves are very very complicated how they're set up um, but that's not anything that you have to worry about you just have to be able to like I said pinch and put some power through it um, you're gonna have to do a lap joint um, and what that is is any like if you think of like a deck of cards anytime you're shuffling a deck of cards and, and they're kind of overlapping and where they're they're sitting on top of each other that is the lap joint um, you can't do uh, spot welding for butt joints or T joints where things are gonna basically come together like this because you have to be able to clamp that metal together and sandwich it in between those two electrodes where the power is going to come through. So anywhere you're going to be doing a lot of sheet metal work, uh, the spot welding is really the way to go. Um, the great thing about them is uh, if you're going to be just be doing basic steel and sheet metal, that type of material, they're very, very cheap. You, I've seen them as low as $75. They might even be cheaper than that. Um, now, I, I haven't used any of those really cheap machines, so I can't really tell you whether or not they're great. But just the fact that they're available and you can get started so cheap and easy is really, really good. Because uh, a lot of guys, you know, when they're when they're welding in the garage, they really just want to kind of work on their car or, or work on some fenders, do something like that, or just play around. And it's kind of hard to get started. Even with a MIG welder, you're still going to end up spending more money. Uh, but if you just want to kind of do some car repair and mess around with that stuff, you can get a spot welder really, really cheap. And, and they usually will run off just your home power source, a 110 source. So that's the other great thing. Now, how they work is, like I said before, you're basically just going to add pressure with a clamp and the electricity. Now what it does is, say so you have your pieces of metal, uh, they're laying, they're, you have your lap joint, your two pieces of sheet, you have them clamped together, and basically those electrodes there, these are my, these are my electrodes here, you're going to pinch down and that power is just going to flow through there. Now, the pressure of them being clamped down and the high amperage flowing through the metal is what's going to bond that metal together. You're basically melting them together, uh, which is the same process as other welding, except when you're melting it together, you're actually adding another type of material to, to help with that bonding. And with, with uh, the spot welding, you don't have to do that. Um, the heat discoloration and uh, the, the distortion is very, very localized. Uh, you know, if you're MIG welding, uh, the longer the bead you run, the more heat you're generating and the more likely you are to have uh, metal warping down the, down the end or uh, a lot of discoloration, a lot of soot, a lot of uh, uh, slag, a lot of stuff you have to clean, but with spot welding it's very precise and very localized in that you're only going to have that heat discoloration and, and actual heat 
where those two electrodes are coming together. Now, almost any kind of common metal that you are going to be working with can be spot welded. Now, given that if you're doing something other than steel, uh, you're going to have to have a different type of machine that's going to cost a whole lot more money. Uh, it's it's really pretty interesting how the price jumps. Uh, you know, steel units you can get very very cheap, like I said before. But if you're going to do something like aluminum, those machines are so complex. I mean, they they literally cost thousands and thousands of dollars to do so. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to have to spend that much money all the time. But if you're looking at to doing some uh, fancier metals, you're going to have to spend more money so you're probably going to end up go taking that to another shop and just having them do it for you now some of the best ways to actually test your welds once you've once you've actually got your spot weld together and, and you want to test it to make sure that everything's going to hold is basically just destruction <laughs> that's my favorite way to test anything is just to try to destroy it now obviously you don't want to do that with your finished product um, so this is why testing is going to come into play. Uh, unless you know your exact settings, you're going to have to play around with them, especially if you're uh, using different thicknesses or, or, or compounds of metals in each project. Um, the best way to do it is just to try to pull it apart. I mean, if, if you can pull it apart easily, obviously you've got some testing you need to do. You need to adjust the amperage or you need to uh, make sure you have it clamped together a little bit longer or maybe not as long there's just some playing around you have to do if it takes you a lot of effort to pull the thing apart but you're still able to pull it apart you're probably okay now unless you have a uh, a pull press that you have all the the gauges on it and you can tell how much pounds per inch you're you're adding to this thing or, or pulling apart this thing you're just gonna have to use common sense I mean really if, if it takes you a lot of effort to pull it apart you're gonna be okay now Another great thing is to just memorize what a good weld looks like. It's not like MIG welding where you can have a weld that looks beautiful, but it's terrible. It's not going to hold. The bonding just isn't there. Uh, with spot welding, you really can get a good eye of what a good weld looks like. And for the most part, you can trust that that's going to be okay. Uh, again, use common sense. If it's something where safety is really, really going to be an issue, you're going to want to find ways to test it. Um, but if you can memorize what a good weld looks like, you're going to be okay. Uh, and a good weld is going to be nice and evenly rounded. Uh, kind of like, basically, you can use your contact point, that tip, as a guide. Uh, you want it to be round just like that. And the discoloration, the color discoloration and heat, is going to be localized to that one area where that tip actually touched the metal. Um, if you have really bad discoloration or your your indention to where the tips were is just all over the place, it's not nice and evenly round, you know you had too much heat and that's not a good weld. Obviously, if there's a hole in the metal, you blew through it, obviously there's something wrong there, you need to fix that. Um, but then there's also, you might not have enough heat or you might not have uh, it sandwiched quite long enough and that's going to give you a very light contact point, very light indentation, uh, light discoloration, but that's going to be easier to, to, to know because you're going to be able to pull that apart very, very easily. Now the other part uh, that I, I, I forgot to mention earlier is when you're actually welding, uh, spot welding, it needs to be very, very clean. Now, it's the case in a lot of most welding, but in spot welding in particular, you need to make sure all the oils, dirt, paint, whatever it is, is completely removed. Now, if you have any kind of sparking or spitting uh, in the beginning of the process, you'll know right away that you need to clean the metal a little bit more because that's going to affect the bonding. Uh, you're not going to have a good bond if it's dirty metal, but you, you'll have some spitting and some sparking, and that'll let you know. Now, I know I kind of breezed through this really quickly, uh, but I really just wanted to kind of, this was kind of an extenuation of last week's going over MIG and TIG, and I just wanted to give you another option for different types of welding processes. So if you're going to be doing a lot of sheet metal work just in your garage, just grab a spot welder, and that's going to be the best way for you to go. Now, if you have any other questions, you can go to theathomewelder.com. And if you want to get started in MIG welding, I have a free MIG welding 101 course to show you real quick how to get into welding. And the five cornerstone, five cornerstone techniques of MIG welding uh, get you started today very quickly. There's a bunch of free videos and articles. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter. It's